Hi, this is Kai for Split Coast Stampers, and I wanted to talk to you today about one of the most popular crazes out in the paper crafting market right now, and these are coloring books. Some things to look for when you're choosing a coloring book is obviously the subject matter. If a coloring book doesn't appeal to you, then it's not worth the money. Additionally, you want to look at the type of paper that is used in these books. Some of them, the paper is not heavy enough if you're going to be using applications like alcohol markers or watercolor. Some of the paper is quite thin. This book is perforated along the edges. That makes it easy to take it out of the book to work on. And some of the books are printed on cream color cardstock and other colors, and they're not perforated. However, the glue bound ones generally will lay flat if you press them down. Another thing that I like to look at is the type of illustrations. Are they whimsical? Are they more realistic? Do they cover the entire page? Or do they leave room for you to add an additional background or some sketches and doodles? I really am loving the Expressions of Faith book by Joanne Fink. She gives us examples of how to take her illustrations and add our own doodles and drawings to the pages to make it more personal to us. She shows you styles. You have colored printed illustrations so that you can see how someone has approached this with color. She gives you some suggestions for color choices and shading patterns. And I really love that she has sent some of her designs out to a design team that all colored the same image, but the end result is completely different from each other. Another thing that you want to consider when you're looking at these is if there is a copyright or an angel policy. Joanne's book has an angel policy where you can make copies for personal use. Some of the other books do not though, and you need to keep that in mind, especially if you might be using these materials in these projects for something that you might wanna sell at a craft fair or other event. I am not a copyright expert, so if you have questions, you need to contact the company. Something else that I found in the Joanne Fink book, she shows us different materials that we can use to color our pages. When I'm looking through her list, I remember that, oh yeah, I do have a full set of Neocolor 2 water-soluble wax crayons stuck in my stash, and I haven't looked at those in a month or two. I'm sure nobody else has that problem. As I mentioned before, some of the illustrations cover the pages, but other pages are left with more space around them. And something you can even consider is augmenting the drawing with your own punches and die cuts. And don't forget, there are tons of pinned ideas on Pinterest, lots on Instagram, and a lot of other places online. So now that you have picked out your favorite coloring book, and you're ready to sit down and color, is there something you need to do first before you get started? I'll show you what I like to do with mine. I am an image hoarder. That means if I have an image, I want it to be documented in my records so that I can find it quickly, but also I want to be able to reuse that image. I don't want to be held up by fear of what if I make a mistake on this page and the whole thing is ruined and it's the only one that I have. Now this particular book is not perforated, but it is a glue bound binding. When you hold the front cover of the book, there is a binding page, it's usually a blank page. So you can tell that those two were put in there together. So when you find that spot, all you need to do is pull strongly and the glue will separate from the front cover. Now that you have the front cover off, every page comes out very easily. Now this book I really wanted to take apart because it's a two-sided bound book and I really wanted to be able to not bleed through onto the other side. The next book I'll show you is perforated and on the perforations all you have to do is gently remove each sheet along the perforated line. Simple and easy. 
Once I have removed each of the pages, I keep them in individual page protectors in a three ring binder. And I have an index page that tells me what book they came from and categorizes them based on whether they're floral, animals, or even what scripture they might have printed on them. This makes it easy to go and grab an image, run it through my printer, and I'm ready to go. Another reason that I like to keep them in the book is so I can print them on different paper media for the project I'm doing. I like to use watercolor paper, mixed media paper where I will use acrylic paint often. Sometimes I like to put it on marker paper. I also like to have tracing paper on hand and I buy the inexpensive stuff from your local big box store. I only want to use a portion of this image to fit inside this frame. I especially like it because the filigree portions of her drawing match this frame really well. So I scan it into my computer and then I go in my Photoshop editor and I single out just the single house that I want to use. And now it's perfectly sized to fit this frame. When you want to print through your printer, especially when using a light material like tracing paper, you need to create a carrying sheet. I just take a piece of regular copy paper and I cut my tracing paper down to the size to match. And then I add a little bit of glue, just a few dots, it doesn't take much, across the head of the paper. And this will hold the tracing paper as it goes through the printer. Some printers pick up tracing paper just fine and some don't, but this is a useful technique. Once your tracing paper is adhered to your copy or carrier sheet, Run it through your printer and you have the perfect control of the size that you want. All you have to do is pull your image away from the carrier sheet and you're ready to go. I like to reduce the sizes of mine for my Bible journaling. And I color these in with Copics and then I apply them to the Bible with Mod Podge. I like that I can still see through the design and read the notes at the bottom of my Bible page but it doesn't interfere with the enjoyment of the actual colored piece. And I had a lot of fun with this because I added gemstones right into the, the Bible page and it just really kind of spices it up nicely. Another clever way to use the resizing is to color these images and glue them onto inexpensive recyclable or disposable plates. You might be curious to know how you can use those coloring pages to extend their life beyond just the enjoyment you get at the moment. Obviously one way is to cut the pages up and use them just like you would colored paper on any card. I also like to take and fussy cut an image and put it onto a plaque. Here's one that I did. I decided that I like the rings. The concentric circles just make me happy. I colored each ring and then I cut them apart. I made multiple copies of this image so that I would be able to cut it apart without worrying about damaging any of the rest of the image. Once I had the image cut apart and colored, then I rimmed one ring with gold embossing paste from Viva. I popped everything up on a layer of dimensional foam. So the rings each have a different elevation on them. And of course I had to add some rhinestones and a faux black frame. It's just cardstock that I've embossed. I do demos for coloring pages. And so I need to have samples that can travel with me without having to take up a lot of space. So I mount them onto foam core board. Here's another one that I've done. Now this one is not cut into segments, but I used basically the same ideas the same concepts in coloring it. Once it was colored, I added embellishments, again with rhinestones mostly, and then I mounted it onto foam core. Here's another project I did. I got a big chipboard letter K. I painted it black with black acrylic paint for the base just so it would cover all the edges and give a uniform consistency. I colored my coloring page with Copic markers and I used a dark background color so that those brighter colors would just pop off of it. I added liquid pearls to give some dimension, some ribbon trim and sequins, 
and a white picket fence at the bottom. And then I had some leftover pieces of burlap, grapes, and grape leaves. And I just made a little centerpiece to hang in the middle. It's adorable and great for your college student. I hope you found this tutorial helpful, and I can't wait to see how you're going to fill our gallery with gorgeous works of art. Show me how many different ways you can use coloring pages. See you in the gallery!